holy crap. We might have screwed something up bad. We, we forgot something that we usually don't forget and it's pretty serious. So I'm Justin's been hitting it with the corn planter after he got done there for some corn. Josh has been chasing uh, my dad's corn planter around, uh, doing pre-emerge spraying. I've been running the, the bean planter pretty much full go. I caught up with all my local people around here. I am helping my dad move him around, getting chemicals in the tank, uh, pulling seed out of his planter because he, he's switching clients. And he's actually going to plant some silage corn for one of our local dairies. I, know, I think I could probably jump in the corn planter and run it. It's very similar to the bean planter. You're just watching a few more pipes with the chemicals, a few more rates. I'm going to try to learn the ropes a little bit more. And then we're going to both move into practically the same field. It's the old fashioned style where it's just split by a rock, what crop they want to put in. I filmed you messing with some blue pumps back there. What were you doing? Well, we got two fertilizer pumps on this planter. The blue one, that sets the uh, pop-up that we put on the row. Uh, we got a little extra product, so we were bumping it up a little bit to use the product up. Well, you got the field opened up, and you're making some dust, so that's pretty good, right? been a rare commodity this year. What's the saying? Plant corn in the dust, your bins will bust? Yep, that's what I heard. So <laughs> we'll see what that holds true. Okay, Dad, so you're putting in mycogen silage corn right now? Yeah. For one of the top five producing by herd average dairies in the state, In right? the state of Ohio, yeah. You think that's because you plant their corn? <laughs> I told them that's the reason. Yeah. But they, right. do a, they do a very good job with their feed program. So coming out of Conventional, just just corn field corn you take for grain. Is there anything different you're doing because it's silage specific? Uh, they have a prescription for our planting here, uh -huh. and the one thing I just sort of noticed: the uh, population is a little bit lower on the silage corn compared to the grain corn. So as I said before, the bean ground I, I'm gonna go do, they're still working on catching up with tillage. So I'm trying to learn the ropes in the corn planter a little more because someday my dad might have to do something besides sit in the corn planter seat. I don't know. Uh, he really likes cooking. Maybe he'd have to cater some hot dog cookout or something and he couldn't plant corn. I have to take over. But we were realizing we were in the cab and you know, we kind of, geez. We had a moment where we thought, holy crap. We might have screwed something up bad. We, we forgot something that we usually don't forget and it's pretty serious. So I'm gonna run back to the truck and I'm not even sure I want it on film because then people will know, they'll know what we did. So this field basically has two parts. There's a, a front and a back, I guess you'd call it. And the back is through the woods. So if I can get to the truck in time, we'll be able to salvage our mistake and fix it before we get to the back of the field. So then half the field is ideal. So the mishap I was referring to, and I hope the, you know, the guys who ultimately have to either profit or lo make a loss off this corn laugh when they see this, but Ugh. We forgot proper hydration. Did all that without a single drink in the cab. That's unbelievable. But people don't understand. These Diet Mountain Dew, you know, we're putting riser down, in furrow, two by two, putting an application to end, putting the best seed we know possible. 
if you don't have proper hydration as an operator, all that, you can just throw it out the window. That is important. Well, you finished those pieces up. Now you're heading through the woods. Yeah. There must be a field back here. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I hope we don't hit too many big wet spots. Yeah, right. Hopefully you don't want to get this train stuck because you're not going to get a tractor in front of it to pull it out. Uh, no. <laughs> the nice thing about that is we're not quite as wide as the combine. No, that's very true. But you know four months from now you've got to get the combine through here too. Better be some branch trimming going on. So I finished my corn tutorial for the day. Uh, it doesn't seem too bad. My dad's got it pretty nice in there. Uh, that, that corn planter is a little bit nicer than our bean planters. It's got the hydraulic downforce. It has the electric motors for your, your seed placement. It's high speed. I mean, it's a really nice rig. So back to my old uh, tried and true bean planter. Uh, I only have about 50, 50 or 55 acres to go plant. So I'm really not in too much of a hurry. I'll get that ripped out of the way. So I figured, I'll take some time and maybe explain to you guys what I'm doing. I came from a, another place with a different type of seed. And the reason uh, switching seed is such a big deal is because there's some that are extends, there's some that are Liberty Link, Roundup Ready, uh, Dicamba. There's a whole plethora of sprays. People will come in after the beans have emerged to clear out weeds. And some of them don't mix. So if, if you go put Roundup resistant beans, but I still had a couple beans that weren't Roundup resistant in my planter. Well, everything I planted, they're just gonna spray and it's gonna die right off. So you, we really can't have that. So I got this planter cleaned out. Sam and I cleaned it out uh, late last night and finished it up early this morning. Came back here. I'm actually planting a Liberty Link variety. Uh, I am going to swing the arm out on the seed tender straight and then back up to it with the planter. And uh, swinging the arm out usually makes it a little bit nicer. You can, you can narrow down where you want to get to and, and pop it right in. Okay, you see what I'm saying about how sticking that out there gives me just something to eyeball the back up to. Squared off pretty good. I'd sort of show you what I'm doing with the seed tender, but it, we put talc on our seed to help with seed flow and it gets so dusty. So I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep the camera over here. What I am doing though uh, consciously is that they ordered just enough seed to finish these 50 acres. So it's only in my front hopper. There's like 3,300 pounds. The only conscious decision I have to make is Okay, I need to split 3,300 pounds evenly in between both my hoppers. So, that's pretty much the biggest. I'm putting 1,650 pounds in each hopper. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. And it never ends up being perfect unless the field is perfectly square. Because you'll have a strip where only the left side's planting or a strip where only the right side's planting. But you just try to do the best you can.
So what you just saw me playing with right there is this, this handle right here controls the seed depth. So each of these notches is supposedly a quarter inch. So right now I'm showing four and four. So that's two inches deep. It's not that simple. Uh, whether or not it would be, it would be two inches deep in like absolute ideal conditions, whatever that means. You don't find that in Ohio. So I'll still have to get out and check, but the goal is to get about two inches deep. And it, it'll be, it's impacted by my, the downforce I'm applying, which is these airbags right here. It's impacted by the smoothness of the ground if my road units are hopping. It's impacted by my speed. It's just impacted by the hardness of the ground. This is tillage, but how deep did the tillage go? There's so many variables, so I'll still get out and check, but that's a good uh, rule of thumb to go by. That's about what you're gonna get, your, your, your notches. Right here are the closing wheels. It's spring tension. These are copperhead closing wheels. They really, really like them. They, they throw dirt right over the seed just incredibly well. I got this set on the second lightest setting. I think that's gonna be fine. Uh, that seems to be doing pretty good behind this type of tillage tool and at that depth. I'm not too worried about that. That's an easy adjustment. I've played around with the different settings too and I don't notice a terrible, terrible difference. The main thing is just the depth. Right now, I'm, some of you guys who have planted before are gonna be like, geez, eight notches, two inches. That's, that's really burying it in the ground, Jeff. Well, yeah, it is. But we're getting extremely dry. It's not, probably not gonna be exactly two inches. It'll probably be inch and three quarter, closer to inch and a half, which is pretty acceptable for late season soybeans. And we have no moisture. The moisture has wicked out of the first inch and a half of the ground, and we don't have any rain coming for four, four or five days. So to give these beans a fighting chance and not just sit there and, and dry up on the top, I gotta get them into some moisture. So we'll see how that is. Well, I usually like to get rolling a little bit before I check depth. I've only went about 300 feet. Uh, but row unit 25 plugged. So I gotta get out anyway, so I might as well check the seed a little bit, make sure we're doing all right. Figure out what's wrong with row 25. Alrighty, so I have the planter at the depth I'm comfortable with. Uh, I have my four la or my two laps all around the field. I'm squared off, I'm running on my AB line. You know, uh, this is where you sort of breathe a sigh of relief. You're like, okay, that works. You know, I'm gonna get this field done. It won't be stressful as long as I don't break down. You just gotta make sure you hit your turns on the end, pay attention, make sure that your population and your row units are dropping the right amount of seed. Uh, just kind of pay attention, you know, the wheels are spinning, clogs are turning, nothing's blowing up, you're not shooting seed out the back, your tractor's not growling, something like that, some chaotic. Now you have time to maybe throw on a podcast and just, just enjoy it. Now you just let modern technology take over. So my dad, the master corn planter, has pulled up in the field right next to me. It's pretty much the same field. It's just a matter of where they decided to make the split. And we're a little old fashioned today in that the split is, is just a big rock middle of the field <laughs> so I actually got to make the, the AB line on the split so I hope they agree with it he's pretty close over there I think it'd be a good time to throw up the drone see how that looks like a little double father-son corn soybean action check it out
just finished this field. My low seed count came on, perfect. And here's my ride, coming down the road. It was a good night. This is probably the end of the video, so hey, thanks for watching guys, see ya.